Welcome to another episode of Understanding Reston. Today we're going to look at the pulse shortener and the monostable circuit, as they are two very useful contraptions in the Reston field. First, I'm going to describe to you how these circuits work. So first up is the pulse shortener. What this basically does is it takes a resin pulse, which from a button, from a stone button, it's 10 ticks, from a wooden button, it's 15 ticks, and it basically converts it into a shorter pulse. And with this one, it will convert it into a three tick pulse. All right, so let's watch it in action. So what you saw there was when this turned on, one tick later, this would turn on and then send a signal through here. Three ticks later, this would turn on and then the piston would extend. So then the block would move out of the way and this would be cut off from here. So then this would turn off because, well, this isn't powering it, is it? And then once it turns back off, everything resets. So next up, we have the monostable circuit. Now the difference between this and a regular po po the difference between this and a regular pulse extender is that this one outputs a one tick pulse. These can output a variable tick pulse, so three, five, ten, doesn't really matter. This one, it's always one. And the reason we have a monostable circuit is because one tick pulses are extremely useful, especially regarding pistons. So, how does this one work? Well, what happens is when I press this button, this will power this block, which then will power the repeater, and this will immediately extend as well. So the block will move up here. So this is immediately disconnected. But it was connected for long enough to get out a one tick pulse from this repeater. As you can tell, it flashes on and off. And then the lamp takes a little longer because it has a delay when turning off. So that's monostable circuit. And now another version which is more compatible and more customizable is this. All it is, is it's a piston pushing an observer. Because as we recall, observers output a one tick pulse, and all we do is we harness that pulse. Because observers, when they're moved, they update. They count that as an update. So there we go. That's the ins and outs of pulse shorteners and monostable circuits. And now for some real world uses of these circuits. So the first one involves the one tick sticky pistons and you know how they can spit and retract blocks with each each time they're powered so press this button the blocks will retract and if I press it again it will spit the blocks out as you can tell that's very useful because normally you'd have to use something like a T flip flop and this is just more compact and easier to use so the next thing I used was the pole shortener now, what I have here is basically an ender pearl, uh refilling station, and when I step on these pressure plates, I give a si signal that's definitely longer than like five ticks. So, what I do is I cut it down to about eight ticks, I think, and then it go runs through here, and it gives me 16 interpols, so I don't abuse the system. Those are a few real-world applications of these circuits. Quick tutorial time. So first we're going to do this one, which is the simplest. So first you need a 2x2 two two platform. And now what you want to do is you want to put two repeaters, button, and a resin dust. Now you can carry this on further to have more delay or more or to customize it more. But this two repeaters is the minimum you'll need. So I'll use this one actually. So first, you want to place the piston down, sticky piston, with a block. Now, listen closely. This, you take this delay and subtract it from this. So this is 8 ticks delay, and this is 2. That means we'll have a 6 tick pulse. Try saying that 5 times fast. So, right here, when we press this button, We'll send it through that repeater, and we got ourselves a six tick pulse. Next up is monostable circuit. Now, most of you've built this before, but all it is is a block button, 
redstone dots on top, and next to it, a sticky piston facing up with another block, and then a repeater coming out of that. And then you can send this into a piston over here to make sure. And there you go. One, two pulls. And the final one, this is like really simple. All you need is a piston with an observer on its face, button, and then repeater. And there you go. And this is customizable. You can customize it to do different areas. So I can have it go up here instead. Like that. There you go. And it can be falling edge. What that means is when the button unpowers, that's when it activates it. So I press this. It waits till the button turns off before it re releases the one tick pulse. I hope you enjoyed today's episode about monostable circuits and pulse shorteners. These are very useful contraptions and they're just more circuits that you can add into your arsenal of resin machinery. Because the more circuits you know, the more resin contraptions you can build. So, I hope you enjoy and see you in the next episode of Understanding Resin. Goodbye.